When I made that top five list video the other day, it got me to thinking about things, thinking about future top five videos and you know topics about this or that. And often you'll hear the top five greatest this or that. And it got me to think about the video that I'm making here for you guys saying, no, don't worry, just because I made two of these in a row doesn't mean all my videos from here on out are going to be top five videos. Um, I just felt the time was right and I really want to make a video about this, so I'm going to, you know, strike while my gears are going here. And the one thing I start thinking about is how good this website used to be, how good some of the content used to be on this website. Um, there's still a ton of good content on this website, don't get me wrong. But what I want to do today is kind of pay homage of sorts or just kind of point out channels that, you know, used to make really good content either don't anymore or started doing something completely different and just I don't understand why but we'll get on to all that in a second here. So what I have is the list of the top five greatest YouTube channels that basically aren't anymore for a number of reasons. So anyways, Starting off the list is probably a channel that you guys have never heard of. Um, in fact, I don't even know if the name of their channel is supposed to be a word or what it's supposed to represent or whatever. Anyways, um, the channel is called CSFCOM or CSFCOM, whatever. Um, what this is, is a channel. It's a guy who's basically uploaded basically two videos like in the past three years. But what he does, it's just a guy who plays piano. Um, I feel he's a very good pianist. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he's the greatest pianist of all time or anything like that. But he would play a lot of contemporary songs, um, a lot of songs that were like, you know, popular in the music industry. Um, or he just play his own works um, and classic pieces like Bach, Beethoven, stuff of that nature. And I, being a fan of classical music, loved a channel like this. I've watched all of his videos and would always wait to see his new videos come out but then it got to the point three years ago where he just stopped making videos. Now I don't know what the deal was. If he wanted to go on and do his own thing then go right ahead and you know you're not obligated to give us any content here on YouTube. Um, this is just a channel that I found extreme enjoyment in and it was something that not many people knew about. Um, that was just basically, this is my one personal entry here that probably you guys just, you know, won't even know about. So I just wanted to give him recognition on this list and just basically thank him for what I got years worth of entertainment out of just watching his content. Number four. Now this is probably someone we've all heard of, at least most of you out there, unless you're new to this website. Mr. Shy City 3. This was, for the longest time, one of my all-time favorite YouTube channels. But he stopped making content. Now, I know he's made content here and there. Um, I don't think he's made anything within the past year, um, other than the time where he got his car rear-ended and people stole the shit out of the back of his car. But anyway, um, this is probably <laughs> one of the best channels that could take a life circumstance, just about anything, and make it so goddamn entertaining. He could tell you a story about how he got a parking ticket, turn it into a 10 minute video, and you'll be laughing your ass off about it. He made a video about just getting courtside tickets to a Chicago Bulls game, and makes you laugh your ass off, just, you know, walking through the, the, the corridors there, and just, you know, talking to fans and shit like that, and busted on Celtics fans, and, you know, just, anyway. The guy, and from the charitable standpoint of what he did with um, his giveaway videos, uh, was beyond compare. The, the compassion and charity this guy showed, um, either that was all fake or it was all legit, whatever the case may be, the message he sent out there in those giveaway videos was just truly commendable. Um, this is a guy who is hands down one of the most entertaining people that has ever turned on a camera and filmed something for you, and he's a guy who's never even showed his face. But there's also someone else who never showed his face, but we'll get to him a little bit later on the list. Number three. R-D-T-S-M-I-T-W. And of course, the T-S-M-I-T-W stands for Artie, the strongest man in the world. Now, maybe St. Bart's this guy still makes videos. He, he, made, he made a video late last month or two months ago or whatever. 
Okay, yeah, that, that may be, be, be the case, but this is an example of someone who had one of the most entertaining concepts, ideas, just series of videos, and just completely broke away from it. Why? I have no idea. Now, I know he's wanted to go legit. He's got legit acting jobs and stuff like that. He wants to focus on that. That's fine. Perfectly fine. Do your thing, Brandon. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I, I just, I never understood why he started, and he started to skew away from, I, and you mentioned the concept. Anyways, he reviews, or excuse me, he didn't review. He created his own interpretation and basically acted out famous scenes from movies. Like, he would, he would do, like, one of the drill sergeant scenes from Full Metal Jacket. He'll do the Why Am I So Funny scene from Goodfellas, you know, stuff like that. And he was a similar age as me, and you could tell by some of the movies he reviewed, like, he did, he did a lot of video, video, excuse me, movies that, like, him or I would have seen when growing up, like, like The Breakfast Club, like Goodfellas, like, a number of other things. And I, I really enjoyed that, just for whatever reason, just seeing someone act out and interpret their basic, just, you know, photocopy of what they saw on the screen and act it out and the, when they're o with their own self. I found that so entertaining and so did so many other people. Those videos got millions of views. But then for whatever reason, he started doing his own thing. He started doing stuff like, you know, like this is a, this is a, a piece I wrote with me and a friend and like they started acting out and I was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really feeling this stuff. This, yeah, it's, it's okay. Like, and I, I don't know. But anyways, that's great. He wanted to do his own thing. But I just never understood why he didn't just, just keep doing that. They were so entertaining. So entertaining. Even when he did movies I'd never even seen, I found them entertaining. Anyway, he's free to do his own thing, and Brandon is doing his own thing. So more the power to him for that. Number two. I told you there was another guy that never showed his face on YouTube, and that, of course, is the YT Watchdog. Um, this is someone who I've mentioned a number of times as one of my biggest inspirations on this website. Um, he was one of the first people that I physically seen. I can't tell you he was the absolute first, but he, to me, he was the first person I saw that was going after these top YouTube whores like Sexy Phil, like Shane Dawson, like a number of other people, Athene Wins, who is now just, you know, plumbing on this website and that crash and burn is so deserved. Um, Basically, going after these people, calling them out for the attention whores that they are, and the second I saw his videos, I was hooked. I am honored that he's mentioned me in several of his videos, and the inspiration that he's given to me, to be someone who just stands up against the system and says, look, just because these guys are popular doesn't mean they're untouchable, was basically the message he conveyed, and I wanted to convey my own personal interpretation of how I saw he was doing things in my own self here. So, I'm always going to be forever, forever thankful to YT Watchdog for what he did here, because who knows uh, if I would have been doing what I've been doing here and entertaining you guys and those that have found entertainment in what I do here. So, a personal thank you to YT Watchdog. Um, don't know really what he's doing with his life, but I wish him best in his endeavors and all that shit. And who knows? Maybe we'll see a video from him anytime in the near future. You never know. He tends to pop up every now and then. So, but anyways, just wanted to give him a, the props that he deserves for inspiring people like me to be the people to stand up against these YouTube attention whores. They just can't get enough attention. They just need more people to subscribe, even though they have more than their fair share and all this other stuff that you've heard me spat off a thousand times. Anyway, props to you, IT Watchdog. Number one. <laughs> uh, a lot of you guys might be stunned when you hear this. Um, this was the first person that I ever clicked that subscribe button to. Um, <laughs> he has a, a hobby that I found of particular interest specifically in my childhood. Um, he has a similar hobby. And uh, that, of course, is with video games. Um, <laughs> well, let's just cut to the chase. We all know who it is. Um, he is the angry video game reviewer known as 
Guardian. Yes! Guardian. Oh, I'm sorry, were you thinking of someone else? Oh, uh, anyway. Um, Guardian. This is a guy, like I said, this is, this is how I found out there was a subscribe button on YouTube. I was like, I was like, this guy, this guy's videos are so clever and funny. Some of them are just short and irreverent and, and they're video game reviews. Mainly, he does other content, but he's most notably known for his little video game reviews. And he was that first guy where I said, wow, I, I, I wish there was a way I could just, you know, stay abreast of, of, of you know, what he's making next. And I was, like, I was like, oh, look, there's a subscribe button. I wonder what that does. And then, oh, you have to create an account. Oh, okay, I'll create an account and subscribe so I can keep track of what this guy does and blah, blah, blah. And then that started the chain of, like, you know, finding other people on this website. One, unfortunately, was another guy from New Jersey who reviewed video games. But anyway, um, uh, anyway, Guardian, um, the first video I saw of him, was a video game review for, God, I, I think it was for Atari, it might have been for another system. Never, I never saw this game as a, as a child, which just goes to show you, he reviewed a game that I'd never even heard of. Um, I do, it might have been a computer game now that I think about it. Um, it was a Robin Hood game. And the game was so awful. So bloody awful. And the thing that was unique about his reviews is he rarely spoke. He rarely physically came on the screen. He rarely offered any dialogue. Occasionally you would see some text pop up on the screen. Sometimes his videos, like look at his review of the Transformers NES game. <laughs> the video is 30 seconds long and it perfectly conveys how horrible that game is. And yes, he reviewed a lot of games before a certain other video game reviewer did, but anyway. Sour grapes. Anyway, um, this guy, like I said, I, I don't know how I cannot put him number one on my list. Look at his series, The Worst Video Games Ever Made. Look at his series, Video Game Deaths. He basically goes into detail about like some of the ridiculous ways that people die, like in, in Contra 2, uh, Super Contra, excuse me. He goes into how, you know, Whenever the guy dies, he randomly does a backflip and yells, and he goes into the like, ridiculous detail of, like, you know, why does that happen? Why does someone who gets, you know, shot from behind go in the opposite direction and do a backflip? Like, you know, stuff like that. It's just, it's just so clever. It's just stuff you didn't think about. Anyways, he goes through a number of video game deaths and why they happen and stuff like that. His worst video game in the world series, uh, that, that is just, that's awesome as well. Anyway, um, again, I'm making this list. Kind of to just let you guys know out there that there's a lot of content that a lot of you guys probably don't know about because they're not making content or as good content as they used to anymore. So they're getting lost. They're getting lost in the shuffle. So seeing a video like this, you know, I hope you guys would go back and check them. And I'll, I'll put like annotations on the screen for each of their YouTube channels. Just go back. Give, give them a watch. Tell me, you know, um, I'm ridiculous. Their stuff sucked. Or tell me, wow, that was, thank you for pointing that out. That was some very entertaining shit, Archfiend. Um, anyway, uh, it's stuff like this on the website that made this website what it was. And <laughs> it's crap like Shane Dawson, Ray William Johnson, all this other shit that made the website what it is today. Never forget where this website came from, people. Never forget what a truly entertaining source this used to be. Remember a time where people just were in your face, they didn't have to con you, they gave you content because they wanted to make the content, not because they were paid to make the content. That is what the majority of the videos made on these lists, on this list here, represent. So, anyway, Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this second installment of my top five list videos. And um, I got a lot more in the future. I, I, I wanted to bang out like 10 of these in a row once I started thinking about doing this. But I'm going to try and do a couple other videos in between and not, you know, kill off this concept. But then again, I doubt you guys are complaining too much if I did a shitload of these in a row anyway. So, anyways. Uh, check out these channels. Um, like I said, I, I left an annotation for them on the screen or, you know, that little search bar function. That, that still works up there. You know, a lot of people forget about that, but that little thing up there, you can type in and just, you know, anyway. Have a great day, everyone. That is all. I haven't said that in a while. I said something after that is all. That was, that was a blatant lie. See, I should have just stopped at that is all.